everybody. I am here with you today to do something a little bit old school and a little bit fun, but something I just fancy doing. So I'm getting ready and um, I have a few new makeup bits to try and I thought, why not just play with them on camera with you guys? Today is a very normal day. Um, I'm just gonna do my makeup as I've been doing every other time that I put makeup on my face. So we're gonna have a kind of combination of an everyday makeup and um, just some new bits that I am either trying or have yet to try. A couple of these I haven't tested out yet. So let's get started. My skin today, so <laughs> my skin. She's not been my friend at the moment. <laughs> I've had quite a few breakouts and things. Obviously my skin is in no means bad, but uh, for me, I don't usually get this many breakouts and it always seems to be when I'm filming a makeup video. My skin can be absolutely perfect for months and then I'll decide to film a video and this happens, but what can you do? So let's get straight into it. I, I have a few base products. I'm not really sure what to use in this video because I've, I've kind of been picking between these every day and sometimes layering every single one of them up as well because that's fun too. I'm gonna start with this though, which is a primer. I never use primer, I'm really bad for it, but I just love the way this one feels. So um, yeah, I've been priming my skin actually. This I'd say is more of a hydrating primer than a, a mattifying primer and I think that's where the big difference is. I don't like those primers that kind of sit in your pores and mattify. I don't have oily skin, so I don't actually need them. I have dry skin, so that's probably why. But um, this is one from Elemis. It's the Pro Collagen Insta Smooth Primer. Insta Smooth. It does say that it's a pore smoothing primer, despite me saying that it doesn't feel like that, but um, it definitely feels more hydrating, and I'm guessing that's the Pro Collagen. So I've actually been using that quite a lot. I'm really liking it. Once I do my skincare in the morning, I sort of usually have breakfast or do some other things that need to be done. I don't always put makeup on first thing. And by the time that I get around to doing it, I find that my skin does get a little bit drier. Uh, even if I've oiled up and put the most moisturizer on that I can, I think it's more probably down to me just liking my face to feel wet at all times. That to me is a hydrated face if it feels sticky and I can feel my products on there. So um, that's been a good little first step in my makeup routine. And then this has been the second. This is from Origins. It's the Ginseng SPF 35 Hydrating Prettifying Finisher. That has a very long and complicated name. Now I actually picked this up by mistake. Um, I meant to pick up the Vitazing Moisturizer from Origins, which is the one that you blend into your skin and has little beads and it pops and it does that sort of thing. Um, I bought this believing that to be the product that I was purchasing, but it is not. This one you can see actually comes out kind of flesh colored. So when I first tried it, I thought, oh, okay, I've, I've bought a tinted moisturizer, that's fine. But actually when you put this on, it almost blends out to nothing. I wouldn't say it acts like a tinted moisturizer in the way that it's covering. For me, tinted products and things like that usually are covering enough, but this just seems to, I don't know how to describe it, it boosts my face. <laughs> it gives me like a glow with some warmth and maybe a tiny, tiny bit of cover. It evens that redness, so I'd say it's more like a corrector, which I'm guessing is why they ended up with Pretty Fire as the name for that. <laughs> Uh, I like it though. I'm glad that I bought this one actually instead of the um, the original product that I was intending to buy. It just seems to boost my skin. It makes it look glowy, it's hydrating, it looks fresh. And most of the time that will be my final step for my base other than concealer and things like that. I'll just use this as my foundation, my base product, and I'm, I'm pretty happy with it. It doesn't really do anything, I'm guessing, to you on camera. But to me, I feel like it just gives me a little something. And I do like, a little something a lot. So that would be my kind of, it's a weekday, I'm not doing anything particularly exciting, maybe I'm not gonna be on camera uh, type of base. So then this is the first of my new, new products. Um, I've only tried this one once and it's from a new brand called Cossas. Now I got this one called Beauty and I've seen it floating around a little bit. I just wanna put a full disclaimer out there now. I know nothing about this brand other than the fact that it's new and, and cool and hip and all the kids are using it. I don't know if the kids are using it, probably not. But um, I wanted to try this one because it's a tinted face oil, which just sounds like heaven to me. That sounds like my dream product 
in one, if I could have invented a product, it would have been this, and I'm kind of annoyed that somebody beat me to it. But um, this is a tinted face oil, so it's a shakewear before applying. It has a little ball in it, so you can really hear that it's quite liquidy. I've not really gotten to grips with how to use this, but at the moment I'm kind of just doing a few drops. You can see how liquid, oh, there it goes, <laughs> how liquidy this is. Um, so I just kind of rub it between my hands and press it into my skin. Basically like I would use a face oil. Trying very hard not to get this on my white collared shirt. That was a bit of a mistake, wasn't it? So it kind of works for me just like that. Um, I will take sometimes just a brush. This is a Real Techniques. Uh, oh, have I actually forgotten the name of this? <laughs> wow. Uh, Real Techniques buffing brush, that's the one. I've only mentioned it about a thousand times. This I'll take and I'll just sort of make sure everything's blended in. It, it definitely has a good amount of coverage to it. A good, I say, for a light coverage product. But it feels so nice. It feels really um, moisturizing, obviously, because it's based in an oil, but it doesn't look too shiny or too oily at all. It just gives a nice glow. So I've really been enjoying that. I feel like there is still probably a better way to use it, um, of which I haven't happened upon yet. So if anybody uh, has a foolproof method uh, for using this product, please let me know. So yesterday I was actually out. I went to a launch, which was fun. Um, it was for a new jewelry collection, Estee. The lovely Estee has done with Daisy. It's her second uh, jewelry collection with them. And it's beautiful and amazing. I actually have one of her pieces from the first collection here on my finger. Oh, and here too, actually. I have her necklace. Um, so yeah, I popped out to that and stumbled upon a Space NK on my way home. And there is a product that I've been sort of seeing and meaning to try out. I was really intrigued by it. And it's not that often that I get intrigued by new beauty products uh, anymore. It takes a lot, it takes something really new and exciting to kind of pull me in and want to try it. So I, I saw this and I decided to go and pick it up. It's from Kevin Aquam. Love myself some Kevin Aquam. They are a very chic, cool brand. So this is the foundation balm, which actually on paper is maybe the exact opposite of everything that I love in a product. I like light coverages, I like tinted things, tinted moisturizers, um, whereas this is a very heavy set balm, full coverage product. Madness, I know. Why did I pick this up? So this actually comes with a little brush, which I think is ridiculously cute. And I just thought this was the perfect type of product to do spot concealing with or spot coverage, as I like to call it now. I'm, I'm coining that term right here. So I usually do use something that's very light, but there are certain areas on my face sometimes that I do want to cover more. I tend to use concealer for this, but sometimes when it's a larger area or if I just want to do my T-zone or something specific, I would reach for a full coverage foundation. And this just seemed to be a really fun way to do it. So it's a solid balm in a pot, which to me kind of says it's going to be more hydrating. It's not one of your classic kind of cake foundations. It's definitely got a lot more to it than that. So I've only kind of tested this out once. I put a little bit, and I mean a little bit, because the first time I used it, I made a massive mistake and put way too much on. You don't need barely any of this at all. A little bit on the brush, and then just kind of buff it into whichever area I need it. So usually my chin just get quite a bit red. I went for the color, what do I have here? Light FB02, uh, which was the second lightest shade, I think and it's the more warm tone ones that had a more yellowy undertone, which I prefer. Just gonna buff into this. I have a kind of little area of breakouts here, or I think it's more scarring, which is very, very red. So let's see how that covers. That is basically exactly what I wanted it for, using it more as a concealing tool than an actual foundation. I think if you went for this all over your skin, it would be a very full coverage, really creamy feeling and flawless looking um, foundation. But for me, wow, look, it's covered that one. That was a big boy. For me, this is just a really great little spot coverage product. So there we go. This is the first time I've really properly used it on fresh skin and not just on top of what I was already wearing. And I have to say, I am very impressed. It's not transferring at all. Nothing on my hand there, really. That was the one worry I had with this because thick cream uh, foundations can sometimes transfer, but that doesn't seem to be 
doing any of it. I have redness here as well at the moment because it's really, really hot in this room. I'm not gonna use it under my eyes as a concealer just because I think it's gonna be a bit too heavy for that. But I think it's pretty much done the job of that or I'm happy with what that's done uh, in terms of concealing around my face. So I won't need to use an extra product. Um, I'm gonna do underneath my eyes though. And for that, I have another new product. I was kind of searching the internet for a new concealer because I like to try concealers, particularly the under eye variety. I seem to find a good one and then I'll use it for a couple of months and either it's my makeup tastes that change, I've just looked at myself in the viewfinder there, wow. It's either my makeup tastes that change or maybe the product doesn't work as well, which makes no sense. Something about concealers just don't seem to last forever for me. I think I just go off them basically. So this one is from Becca and it is, it basically sounded like the perfect under eye concealer. It's the Aqua Luminous Perfecting Concealer and it is a very thin feeling product. It has a an almost like cooling feel to it, which is quite strange. I'm gonna buff this in with probably my favorite concealer brush. I've been using this a lot recently. It's the Pro Airbrush from Sephora. It's really thin and small, but it gives a good buff. Um, this one, it, it just feels very weightless and it covers, but doesn't mask under there. I think that's what I mean when I say my tastes have changed. I don't mind so much having some of this darkness under my eyes on show. I actually quite like it. I think it makes makeup look more modern, makes your skin look more natural as well. So I've not been reaching for a really full coverage concealer as I would do in the past with corrector, concealer, everything, all that jazz underneath there. I've just wanted something that's gonna smooth everything out a little bit, but leave a bit of that shadow under there. And this one pretty much fits the bill for that. It does a good job. I'm getting a little bit of a sweaty upper lip. Let's just blot that down. So there we go, that's my base done. I'm gonna set it with a little bit of powder, um, especially under my eyes, just to stop my mascara from transferring. And this is this is not new. There are no surprises here. This is my favorite setting powder of all time. And it's the Charlotte Tilbury Airbrush Flawless Finish Powder. So weightless, you cannot feel this. It's amazing. And it doesn't seem to add anything to your makeup. I think it's supposed to have a little bit of coverage, but to me, it just, it does nothing. <laughs> nothing other than take away shine, which is what I want. Okay, what's next? I've gone back, I have gone back to being a powder bronzer girl. I think it kind of signifies the time of year when I go back to powders instead of creams. Um, this one is from Make Bronzing Brick, oh, it is the bronzing brick, um, in the shade Joshua Tree, and it's, quite nice and a little bit different to a normal bronzer because it's got that pearlized look to it or that baked, okay, <laughs> that was loud. Um, it's got that baked finish to it. So it gives just a little bit of glow and sheen without being sparkly or anything like that. I do find you have to be quite light-handed with this or I do in particular because it is um, very pigmented and maybe a little bit too dark for me, but I like the overall color this gives, so. As we know with bronzer, I pretty much just chuck that all over my entire face. Um, let's put it everywhere. That's my bronzer and I have just realized I do not have my blush with me. Hold on. Also just fix the lighting because that was getting a bit wild. So blush, no changes. I, this is probably the only blush that I've used for months and months and months. Um, it's from Clarins. It's the Illuminating Cheek Color in number five Rosewood and it's the perfect dusky pink. It just is the one. So this is um, the point where I'll do my brows. I am just gonna do this really quickly because there is nothing exciting or new here for you to watch. I don't really do anything in particular apart from fill them in with a thin pencil. This is from Benefit, it's the Precisely My Brow. Someone actually commented on one of my videos um, a little while ago that it frustrated her so much that one of my brows was higher than the other that she just wanted to scream or, or do something dramatic. And I don't know what to tell you. I think it's just my face. Maybe it's, I'm not sure which one it even is. Which one's higher? I think it's this one. I either raise my eyebrow too much or they're wonky. I, what, what am I gonna do about that? I can't, I can't change my eyebrows, I'm sorry. There we go, two eyebrows, one higher than the other. Uh, so I do actually have 
a new brow product to try in this box here. I have been trying to get hold of this for a really long time and it turns out that it's it's usually sold out. Um, again, I managed to snap this up on Cool Beauty because I put in a please email me when this is back in stock, I need it request. And it's from Iconic London. Never tried anything from Iconic London. My understanding of them is that they're sort of similar to MUA or Makeup Revolution. And I thought you could find them in Superdrug, but it turns out you can't. Um, but they seem to have done a very viral thing and produced this, which is the Brow Silk. Um, it kind of really reminds me of very old fashioned, old Hollywood movie star type products where you have a separate little brush. I think this is how they used to do mascara with um, black mascara cake and, and brush it on your lashes that way, which I think is cool. I like, I like that a lot. But this is kind of like a thick balm. Wow, it's actually very, very thick. It's clear, colorless. And what you're supposed to do is sort of cover the brush in this and use it to brush up your brows. It says, a wet or dry brow silk, you can use a wet or dry, creates a naturally full feathery brow with zero mess. So I'm just gonna use this dry because that's what I have going on now. This is actually quite difficult. Maybe I do need to wet it. Is there anything on there? There we go. Okay, you have to be quite forceful to kind of get some product onto the brush. So I'm just gonna brush this up. Now I'm guessing this is gonna give a similar effect to something like soap brows, um, which is when you use actual hard soap in your brows and it sticks them down. That I think you do before you fill them in. So I'm not quite sure how this works because I think this is designed to be used afterwards. But actually, can you see the difference if I get a little bit closer? This is the brushed up brow and this is the normal one. Um, it's really held them up quite well. It, it does feel kind of like soap, but a little bit more silky. It's it's a little less firm and it's made my brows, they are quite long at the moment. They haven't been tamed for a while, um, but it's made them really kind of stand up and look quite feathery and fluttery. I can tell this is gonna get very messy, this product. It's not gonna look as pretty as it does now, forever. So let's do the other one. I don't know if this would make much of a difference being wet. I actually quite like the consistency of it dry. Uh, I feel like you have some control over it because it makes it a bit thicker. So there we go. I actually really, uh, really like how those have turned out. It does make them a bit softer and more kind of silky and natural and feathery because they are also defined. I think that's kind of down to this very toothbrushy looking thing as well. Now, for some reason, I, I just have it in my head that I really want to do a glossy eye. I've never done this before. <laughs> I don't have the right product for it, but I just really want to try it. I've seen a few um, actual eye glosses out on the market now. I know Kevin Aquan do one and Chanel had one in a maybe a limited uh, collection. I had a few candidates here that I think could have been used. Glossier uh, Lip Gloss, which I decided was probably too sticky. A Bobbi Brown High Shine Liquid Eyeshadow, which I tried this on the back of my hand and it was just, it was, there was too much color and too much shimmer in it. So I've gone for um, a very old school, I'm sure well-loved uh, favorite Vaseline. I have uh, the Cocoa Butter version, that's why it's in this brown tub. I can't say I'm a massive fan of Vaseline. I picked this up once because I was in an absolute pinch and there was nothing else to do but go for the Vaseline. Uh, I think I, I got it to use as a lip balm and I don't remember hating it actually, but it's not my favorite thing. Vaseline just sort of sits and coats rather than actually penetrating and moisturizing. But I thought because this doesn't have such a sheen to it, it's not super glossy, but it does have that kind of wet look. This could work really well. So I'm not gonna put anything on my eyes first. I don't really wear eyeshadow now anymore. It's not really my cup of tea. I just tend to go straight for mascara. But I was wondering if I did this all over my lid, if it would look like a, a glossy eye product. I'm guessing to really work, it would have to have some sort of undetectable shimmer in it, whereas this is just gloss. And it's not gonna feel amazing. It's still gonna feel a bit sticky, but I was intrigued. I thought, why not? Can't say it's massively done anything. And it's also creasing with the concealer that I have on my eyelids. I shouldn't have put that there. That was a mistake. But I actually think maybe there's a tiny bit of sheen there. I also don't hate the way that feels. Um, let me curl my lashes and do some mascara. There we go. That was L'Oreal Telescopic Mascara. I've also very much been a uh, no mascara on the bottom lashes type of girl recently. Who would have thought? What I do sometimes do to kind of compensate for that 
is just take a really small brush and my bronzer again and I'll just do a little bit of shadow underneath there just so that it doesn't look like it's completely uh, concealed out. This is kind of what I was talking about with keeping my natural shadow in there. I like the way that it looks. Okay, we'll, we'll come back to the glossy eye and we'll check in on that later. Uh, I just want to finish off my skin with some final little touches. Uh, for that, I'm going to do some highlighter. This is from Glossier and it's the Play uh, Nightshine Highlighter Concentrate. By far my absolute favorite highlighter. It is amazing. So I just do a few little dabs of that down my nose and then on the tops of my cheekbones. And I'll just usually reach for any brush I can find to blend that in. Today is the Real Techniques one. Such an amazing product, the way it just blends in seamlessly. It's so nice. And it does look very highlighty, but very natural at the same time. And then my final product before I stick a little bit of lipstick on is my good old fave Freck. I've seen a few of you tweet me or message me on Instagram that you've been using this and I have to say I love that. Somebody started up the hashtag I covertly made me do it the other day and I am fully on board for that. So if uh, if you haven't influenced influenced as much as I hate that word into trying anything that I have talked about, let me know guys because that's always fun. Uh, so this I'm actually running really low out of you can tell how much I use it. But um this is Freck which is basically a faux freckle product and it's amazing i just dot this on basically over my nose and then if i'm if i'm feeling wild i'll sometimes take it out onto the tops of my cheekbones and the way this works is you just do a few dots and then you press it in and transfer it all over so it kind of does little imprints of the original marks you made that you transfer it over with your finger and just blend and blend until it looks very natural and it sort of dissolves into your skin and it doesn't do a lot but I just I love the way it looks I love having freckles I do have a few freckles but they're almost undetectable and I I really managed to stay out of the sun this year so not only am I very very fair skinned right now whereas I think last September I was on the level of bronze goddess or about as much as I can manage anyway so yeah I uh, I don't have many freckles on show so this product basically gives me what I want and makes them for me. Last of all, I'm just gonna throw some lipstick on. I am still using a daily, all day, every day, my NYX uh, MAC Cream Lipstick in London, uh, but I've kind of been lining my lips a little bit first um, with, this is from NARS, it's one of their Velvet Matte Lip Pencils in Good Times. Pretty much the exact same color, if not maybe a little bit darker. Um, so I like to use that to line and then I smudge it out just a little bit and then I go on top with the NYX, which actually is maybe a, a touch lighter and has a bit more of a orangey warmth to it. And there we go, that is my makeup. That's what I'm wearing today and basically my everyday look. Um, let me get a little bit closer so you can see this glossy eye, which I think has actually worked quite well. It just looks very dewy and maybe like I've had a little bit of natural oily eyelid situation going on. But that's a good thing and it looks cool and chic and like I meant, I meant to do it. So uh, thank you guys so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed uh, playing around with some new makeup with me. Uh, everything I'm going to list down below with the shade names too because I know it frustrates you when I don't mention those. So I'll put that down um, in the info box. And that is it for me. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you soon. Bye.